Welcome, and thank you for joining Sandcastle Theatre Company for an audio play reading of Sonrisa del Coyote by David Alonso Rodriguez. This is Sandcastle Theatre Company's inaugural production. We are an emerging theatre company committed to nurturing and producing new plays, growing a broader theatre community, and creating accessible opportunities for people to experience original stories. We hope you enjoy the show. Sonrisa del Coyote, a one-act play by David Alonso Rodriguez. Setting, multiple locations scattered throughout Mexico. The characters exist in a world where magic runs deep in the land, but has been forgotten. Mexico City, 1991, a small urban home of the Costales family, Lupa, Sofia and Dani, a vibrant wallpaper decorated with Mexican roses. The scent of new wallpaper glue and flower hangs in the air. Sofia, a young mother, frantically tidies up the room, is small but cozy. Bed next to the kitchen table, kitchen table next to the couch. It's not much, but it is home. Dani, her 10-year-old son is very excited. Come, come. Ayúdame, mijo. You can't go to school without a pair of pants on. Says who? Says me. Y el tico monster. Oh, no! <laughs> they horseplay a bit on the bed. Sofia tickles him as he attempts to escape her clutches. <laughs> no más. <laughs> no más. It's too much. <laughs> Bien, bien. Come on. You don't want to be late for the bus again. Sí. Lo siento, mamá. Está bien, mijo. Danny finishes getting dressed. ¿A qué hora llegará el correo? Soon, hijo. Tío did not forget about you. Better not have. Ooh, you look very handsome today. I know. Oh, lo sabes, sí. How did you get so smart all of a sudden? Why am I paying for all this school then, eh? Maybe you should teach the class. Yeah, then the classes would be funner. Tus clases no son divertidas? No, they are. It's just, the kids make me feel funny. Me siento raro, like I don't belong or something. Hijo, that's silly. Of course you belong. Why do you feel this way? Habla conmigo. Notes and stuff. Lupa was passing a note. I saw it and it said I was a monster. Lupa is just being silly. She does not mean harm. How long has this been happening? Not long. Hace un mes, más o menos. ¿Y por qué no hablas conmigo? No sé. Yes, you do. Look at me. Mírame, Danny. Why do you not talk to me? I didn't want to worry you. Pero, Danny, if you don't talk, I will worry. Soy tu madre. Es mi deber. I wanted to be strong. I can do it. Y eres muy fuerte aquí, in your heart. Don't be so prideful, though. Ask for help with these things. Tu padre nunca pidió ayuda, and look where he is, fighting for a cause that I don't even think he knows anymore. I know. Escúchame. You belong. I promise. Don't let anyone tell you what you don't. Okay? There will be people in this life who will not like you and then... Jeez, thanks. Let me finish. People get mad at things they don't understand or are envious of. Tú tienes un don especial. Tienes algo que nadie más tiene. La perspectiva. A gift? Sí. Tú perteneces a dos mundos. That means you have two sets of eyes, two hearts, y dos almas. Eres muy especial. You are a very lucky child. No me siento afortunado. Pero de todas formas. Y yo también. Because 
I have you and you have me y tu hermana. Es todo lo que necesito. ¿Está claro? Crystal. Bueno. <laughs> Now, come on, Miko. You're going to be late. Sí, señora. Maldita recta señora. <laughs> Danny rushes out the door, grabbing his bag on the way. Sofia settles back into her routine, beginning to sweep around the table. Danny re-enters silently, surprising his mother with a kiss on the cheek. If I'm a monkey, entonces tú eres una jirafa. Danny <laughs> giggles mischievously and heads back out the door. Well, soy la madre de un mico. Sofia smirks, but the smirk fades as she notices Lupa, 15 years old, standing in the doorway of the only other room in the house. Lupa is dressed in a bright, swirly skirt with many colored ribbons. ¿Qué cuentos lindos le cuentas, mamá? Sofia me... begins folding some unfinished laundry tensely. Shouldn't you be getting ready, hija? I am. When are you going to tell him? When the time is right. Which is when? When I deem it so. So just whenever you feel like it? No seas maleducada. Es difícil cuando mi madre es mentirosa. Cállate la boca. It is for the best he doesn't know. He deserves to know. Él es diferente. ¿Cómo? ¿Cómo que es diferente? ¿Es un monstruo? Should I let him run wild and be raised por los coyotes? Maybe you should talk to him because you have such a way with words. I didn't write the note. Fue Jenny. No me importa. Then he looks up to you. You need to be better than that. ¿Y tú? Hablas del don y perspectivas. Son mentiras. Soy tu madre y yo soy quien va a tomar las decisiones. Now go on and get ready. You'll be late too. I just hope you know what you're doing. Lupa retreats to the room to prepare for the day, leaving Sofia with her thoughts. She sits next to the kitchen table and picks up a picture of their father and the family. Yo también. Mexico City, 1997. The Costales house, a bit shabbier than we first saw it. Some wallpaper, but with less life and pieces torn. Two smaller beds in place of the one that was previously in the room. The furniture is weathered, and the room feels less comforting. Sofia is where we left her, but the years have taken their toll on her. She sits with her head hanging low as she reads a letter in front of her for what must be the sixth time. The siblings enter, Danny, now 16, and Lupa, now 21. Come on, Miko. What about this girl? You like her? Quit it, Lupa. We share our class together, that's all. She's nice and all, but she keeps staring at me in class. It's muy raro. And stop calling me Miko, ya no soy un niño. Oh, but you'll always be mi Miko pequeño. Maybe she's trying to get your attention. After all, pasas todo el tiempo con that sketch pad of yours. Little Picasito. Would you knock it off, you big... Mama? Todo bien? Sí, sí, Denny. Just lost in my thoughts. ¿Cómo te fue en la escuela? Bien. ¿Y tus amigos? Not giving you too much trouble? They're fine. Are you okay, mamá? ¿Te acuerdas de cuando te conté del viaje? Sí, con Uncle Tío, ¿no? Sí, hijo. Well, it's going to happen, but it's going to be a bit more permanent. ¿Qué quieres decir con permanente? Hijo, te quiero muchísimo, pero under the circumstances, I cannot provide for you and your sister the way I want. So Tio has agreed to take you both with him as he makes the journey. Journey where? A California. ¿Qué la chingada? No hables conmigo de un viaje. Lupa! Mama, no entiendo. What do you mean you failed? You haven't done anything. Hijo, así es. I haven't done anything, anything that would really benefit you and your sister. 
These last few years, I've been patching together old clothes, feeding you the same old food day in and day out. Mereces una vida al otro lado. Aquí no eres feliz. Pero sí soy feliz. Aquí me gusta mi vida. ¿Qué más necesito? Una escuela mejor. Your talents are wasted here. I see the drawings you try and hide under the mattress. You need somewhere your gifts will be nurtured. It's all for your benefit. You're lying. His benefit? His benefit? So you think uprooting us will be better? ¿Qué pasa con nuestros amigos? ¿Nuestra familia? We'll be outsiders over there. We won't belong. We're worse than here. We'll be strangers. You can't do this. Esta decisión no me fue fácil, Lupa. Hablé con tío and he agrees that this will be the best decision for you too. Pero nunca hablaste conmigo ni con Dani. What about us, eh? Don't our opinions matter? Entiendo que estás enojada, pero no tengo otra opción. Of course you do. Uh, you, you could have talked to us. Danny even talked about getting jobs, help around the house. You, you don't know anything about what's best. You're so selfish. You could have done anything else except... Lupa! <laughs> Para ahí. Everyone is still as Danny tries to find his next words. I'll go. No te engañes. I am. And I want you to come with me. Okay. <laughs> now you're just talking crazy. Come on, Lupa. No, you come on, Danny. Los Estados Unidos? No entiendes lo que significa? Yes, I do. Es un lugar de posibilidades. Haven't you always wanted things to change for us? To make things better for mamá? Well, now's our chance. Ella nos necesita, and we have an opportunity to make things better for everyone. I believe in us, don't you? Fine, but only because you're so good with your fancy little speeches. Lo siento, mamá. I lost my temper. Está bien, hija. Eres apasionada como tu hermano. Lo que me importa ahora es su viaje inminente. How do we get there? It won't be easy. Part of it will be on foot, y otra parte en la bestia. Sofía pulls out an old weather train map. Vamos a usar la ruta utilizada por sus primos. When you get a little bit out of Guadalajara, you will sneak out into the train and make your uncle on the coast. Tiene un bote que usarán para el viaje desde Tijuana. He will do his best to get you there. La bestia is dangerous, no? Yes. But that's why you will have each other. Take care of one another. Sleep in shifts, or else it will take in the night. Al final de todo, la familia significa la seguridad. Trust no one else. You can use some of the blankets to trade for food and water, but only when you really need it. ¿Entienden bien? Sí. We will. Sofia takes in the sight of her children standing confidently before her. She fights back her tears and assembles for them a couple of backpacks with some basic necessities. You will need this tarp in case of rain, this lamp for light at night. The sleeping bags are thin, but it will be better than just sleeping on the ground. Sophia is interrupted by her children embracing her together. Her tears fall as she wraps her arms around them warmly and then looks them dead in the eye. Estén seguros, mis hijos. They finish assembling the bags, and Danny heads out the door. Lupa lingers. Come with us. No, you must make this journey alone. You will be less likely to be caught. Además, estoy vieja. You wouldn't want me to slow you down. I love you, mamá. Igualmente. Be safe. Lupa hugs Sofia tightly and then walks out the door. Sofia sits again at the table, clutching her rosary. Midday on the outskirts of Guanajuato. The siblings have been on the road since late last night and are exhausted from the heat. They are traveling through a thick forest on a hillside Lupa is navigating ahead, while Danny, 
lags behind. Lupa takes a moment to make their next move. Uh, ¿Sabes dónde estamos? Sí, I'm the one with the map, aren't I? El hecho de que tienes el mapa no significa que sabes en dónde estamos. Escúchame, señor. Es mi responsabilidad to make sure you don't get eaten alive by coyotes or, or worse, kidnapped on this journey al otro lado. You need me, ¿me entiendes? Coyotes? Those are only legends. <laughs> ¿Sí? ¿Eres experto en los coyotes? No, hay un solo coyote to worry about. Se llama... Yoto. Yoto? What kind of mierda is that? No es mierda. It's true. Mama told me herself. I wouldn't listen to todos los cuentitos de mama. Some of them are just that. Little stories. What do you mean? No. No es nada. I'm just saying, think for yourself every once in a while. ¿De acuerdo? Bruja loca. Watch that mouth! I... Lupa smacks Danny over the head. Mira, I'm just saying, mamá wouldn't tell me stories just to mess with me. Los padres les dicen cuentos a sus hijos to protect them, not to confuse them. I believe in the stories, even if you don't. Perdón, Dani. I guess I got carried away because of the heat. Maybe you're right. Maybe mamá just told us those stories to help us. But I don't think they're magical. Mira. How about you start setting up the camp for the night? I'll try and find us some food. Bueno, but you're wrong. Danny begins to set up the camp as Lupa walks away. As Danny is unrolling the tarp and sleeping bags, La Eremita, the hermit, enters. She is dressed in a shabby patched cloak, a fox mask, and a scarf, and walks with a knotted walking stick. Despite her appearance, she's very light on her feet. Hijo. ¿Cómo? The hermit plays a trick on Danny, making it sound like her voice is coming from one direction, but sneaking around and scares him from another by howling. <laughs> Usted, ¿quién es? ¿Quién? Usted. ¿Quién es usted? Mi. ¿Quién eres mi? Usted. No, ya dijiste que usted es yo. Ay, no. I'm me and you are you. ¿Y quién es yo? Usted. See, now you're just being confusing. Danny lets out a muffled scream into his sleeping bag. <laughs> ¿Nunca te enseñó tu mamá que no hablarás con gente desconocida? You're the one who scared me and started talking to me. <laughs> If you say so. ¿Qué quiere? No deseo nada. La pregunta es, what do you want? Nothing from you, bruja. <laughs> oh, no soy bruja, hijo. Soy una eremita y estoy aquí para ayudarte. Whatever help you're offering, I don't want. Not even if I could show your sister that la magia existe? What do you know about magia? Más de lo que tú sabes. Aquí, por ejemplo. Eremita takes out a necklace in the shape of a coyote. The eyes are crystal, and the rest of the face is turquoise and glorious. But down to the touch? There is something off about it. A necklace? What kind of mierda is this? This necklace is una parte de Yoto, el coyote de la magia antigua. Hace mucho tiempo, una niña cerca de tu edad se encontró con Yoto cuando viajaba hacia el otro lado. Al coyote le gusta jugar trucos con los niños que viajan. And so she struck a deal with the child. If the child could defeat her in a game of the child's choosing, she would grant her three wishes. Yoto thought she would win with a series of false rules and lies. La niña, clever as she was, agreed to the game under one condition. Yoto had to play the game of hide and seek blindfolded. The old coyote agreed. 
confident in her sharp hearing, but the child was talented at throwing her voice, imitating the wind or branches crunching underfoot. The coyote, defeated, held true to the bargain. Pero Yoto once again was tricked by the child who made her wish in the form of a riddle. Yoto terminó atrapado de entre un collar de turquesa como ese. It is said that should she ever become free from her prison, she would reap vengeance on the child and reign a fate most terrible on the world. Thunder is heard overhead. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Pretty big stuff you're holding right there. It is a good luck charm for anyone looking to cross that border and make a new life. No kidding. Nope. How much? How much do you have? Danny reaches into his pocket and pulls out his pesos, which come to about 60 US dollars. This is all I have, but there's no way I could spend it on. Oh. Eremita swings the necklace in front of him like a hypnotizing watch, keeping the crystal eyes interlocked with his. Danny is entranced and Eremita swipes the money from his hand. Gracias. De nada. Eremita drops the necklace into his hands and begins to sneak off, counting the money. But then is compelled back. Una cosa más. Whatever you do, be very careful with that necklace. Don't drop it. I've heard terrible tales of those stupid enough to not pay heed to my story. At least that's uh, what the guy who I swiped it off of said. <laughs> Eremita escapes in a sudden smoke cloud, her laugh echoing through the camp. Loca. Danny looks over the necklace and puts it on. I wonder if this thing is for real. ¿Por qué no te enteras por ti mismo? A mysterious voice seems to be coming from inside the coyote necklace. But just then, Lupa re-enters, startling Danny, who fumbles to hide the necklace in his shirt. Danny? Ah! Ah! You jerk! You almost scared me half to death. Me? You're the one slithering around like a snake. I was coming to check how the campsite was coming along. Not too well, I see. Sorry. Got a little distracted looking around. It's okay. I found some food for us. Frutas y otra cosas así. Were you talking to someone just a second ago? Me? Oh no, no. Uh, just thinking out loud and stuff. You know how it is. Embracing the outdoors. Es increíble aquí. Las vistas, los sonidos. I've never felt so liberated. <laughs> Soy el rey del mundo! <laughs> <clears throat> well, anyways, I'll, I'll finish up the camp. As Danny leans over to assemble the sleeping bags and tarp, the necklace slips out of his shirt. ¿Qué es eso? ¿Cómo? No es nada, no es nada. Just an old necklace. Dámelo ya. Lupa sticks out her hand, and Danny, ashamed, gives her the necklace. She examines it frigidly. ¿De dónde has sacado esto? Nowhere. I found it. Mentiroso. Dímelo en serio, or I will smash this thing into a million... Bueno, bueno. I got it from... Una eremita. Una eremita? ¿Y dónde está la eremita? I don't know. She disappeared into a ball of smoke. ¿Cómo? She disappeared into a ball of smoke, okay? I think she was a bruja. She said the necklace has great powers and, 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 and that it contained the spirit of Yoto trapped inside of it and that bad things will happen if you try to break it. She waved it in front of my face and I got starstruck and... How much? What? How much money did she get out of you? How much did you spend on this garbage? Not much, I think. Just what I had. You're joking, right? 
Dani, that's all the money we had. Mamá no me dio más dinero. That's it. That's everything. I'm sorry. I got all jumbled, and I think the necklace might have talked at me a second ago, so... Todo es tan típico de ti. You're so irresponsible and weird about this stuff. Someone could sell you a seashell if they told you it would make beans come out of your ears. Hey, that's not true, and this is different. It did. The necklace did talk to me a second ago. You just probably couldn't hear it over the sound of your obnoxious voice. Do you understand what's happening here? We're stuck. We can't get any farther. We'll probably starve before we get to Guadalajara. And over what? Some stupid piece of mierda that probably isn't even real? It is real. Now give it to me. Danny lunges at Lupa, but she is quick and pivots in a circle to avoid his grasp. Danny continues to try to get the necklace as Lupa plays keep away. I am not giving this back until you admit you are wrong. Wrong about what? Wrong that I thought una viejita como tú could understand something like this? Lupa stops holding Danny by the shoulders. When are you going to grow up? You can't keep living in this fantasy. Tú eres la única fantasía aquí. You think you know everything, but you don't, especially about this. Hay cosas en este mundo that even you wouldn't understand. Try me. Lupa looks down at the necklace and scoffs. She tosses the necklace to the ground and it shatters. There's a sound, like all the oxygen vanishing in an instant. The world goes dark for a moment, and then there is silence. Orange, red, and blue lights explode into existence. Ow! Yoto enters. She wears a brilliant white and gray coat with an eared hood. A mask in the shape of a coyote covers half her face. Yoto's jewelry rattles like a snake as she prowls slowly towards Lupa and Danny, and her voice resonates throughout. Well, well, ¿qué tenemos aquí? Yoto smiles a wickedly toothy grin, a smile that could send shivers down the bravest spine. She strikes her hands out as if to seize the existing light. Dusk on the coastline of Sinaloa. We have been transported through Yoto's magic. We find ourselves in the cave lagoon with the salagmites and sounds of water against the wall. Dim, yellow, and cool blue lights shape the cave, hiding Yoto in the shadows as Danny and Lupa assess where they are. Lupa, what just happened? No, no sé. Pues, ¿dónde estamos? I don't know where we are either. Maybe on the coast? Pues, ya no estamos in Mexico City. Yoto's ethereal voice echoes through the cave. You can say that again. <laughs> Who's there? <laughs> Niña, tus preguntas están equivocadas. <laughs> it's not who I am. It's what I am. Then what are you? Only the sky knows. It's been around long enough to see me take shape. I am a lot of things. The soil that forms beneath your feet. The wind that laughs through the chimes. The fire you use to keep yourselves warm at night. Pero simplemente soy omnisciente y all existing. I don't believe you. <laughs> ¿Y por qué no? Because you haven't proved to us that you are all these things. Ay, but you hear didn't I? See, sí, pero you could have knocked us out and just brought us here. You have to prove que usted es mágica. Oh, 
te voy a dar la prueba. Yoto slinks forth from the shadows. She stands before the siblings and focuses herself, bending her knees to gather strength. A small rumbling is heard, and she shoots out her hand, and a small bouquet of flowers springs forth from a single stalagmite. <laughs> ¿Cómo? <laughs> nada, nada. It's impressive. ¿Es cierto, no, Dani? <laughs> oh, yes. You are very magical indeed. Yoto is baffled at the children's amusement by her powers. She again focuses. The rumbling this time is a tad louder. And as she focuses and casts her magic forth, two larger bouquets of different flowers burst forth from the stalagmites. <laughs> <laughs> ya no! Ya no! <laughs> I've seen better tricks with Theo. See, see. Please, no more. I can't breathe, it's too much. <laughs> no longer amused, Yoto's mask glows white hot with an ethereal fury. She stands striking the ground with her foot and a large rumble ceases the siblings' laughter. Like small earthquakes, she strikes the ground with her feet, coming closer to them as the ground shakes. Yoto then raises her hands from the stomach slowly, as if causing the entire earth to waken and rumble. The lagoon turns red, and the sound of boiling water fills the air. Then... She strikes her hand, and everything stops. Siblings are speechless. Not all my magic is for your amusement, Nina. Remember that. <laughs> oh, how I love it when I leave them speechless. <laughs> This one I like. Sí, niño. Como dije, soy all-knowing y omnipresente. Though I have no name, some like to call me Yoto. Well, what do you want of us? <laughs> and the charmer as well. I desire nothing of you, but you do fascinate me. So much so, I wish to help you on tu viaje al otro lado. How did you know we were traveling to the other side? Uh, you must acquire some new ears, child. I said all knowing, not partially knowing. Now, clearly, judging from your faces, I have proven myself to be magical enough, so I will bestow upon you tres cosas your heart desires most. Todo lo posible? Anything your heart desires. All I ask in return is that you allow me to introduce you to mi familia, and they will help you on your journey to the other side. Daddy, this is way too dangerous. We have no idea what she is capable of. And remember what mom said, trust each other y no confías en nadie más. She does sound like una viejita. Maybe you should listen to your... Mother. <laughs> Come on, Danny, we should leave. As Danny and Lupa start to leave, a terrifyingly wayward smile comes across Yoto's face, stopping the siblings dead in their tracks. It's gracioso coming from someone he hardly even knows himself. ¿Qué le dijo? Think back, child. Danny. Was there ever a time when you felt out of place? Or you questioned your placement in this world? Like maybe there was something no one was telling you? Please, don't. What is she talking about, mana? Oh, niño. Ella no es tu hermana. I don't think she even re she's related to you. Neither is your mother. If anything, you're closer to me than anyone else in this world. You see, every so often, a star will fall from the sky 
and give birth to un niño de la naturaleza. They have no parents. They have no siblings except the other stars. But they are as much a part of this world as anyone else. They are destined to wander, searching for their place and can't find it. Pero desgraciadamente, they are cursed to be outcasts for they have two souls, two hearts, nacidos de dos mundos. You're lying. My family would never do that to me. They love me. Sí, y que hay de tu padre. He could not stand the mere presence of you. A child found out in the woods, taken into his home and called his son when he could not produce his own. Human pride is so fickle in that regard. If you don't believe me, ask your so-called mana. Lupa? Dani. No. Mama, yo, we wanted to protect you. We, wa we wanted you to be part of our family. I can still remember when we found you in the berry bushes. You had blueberry juice all over your face. Te parecía eso a un mico. That's why we called you that. And dad, he just didn't understand how remarkable you are. You were right. So you monstro. No, you're not. And you're a liar. Y mamá también. All those stories, all those pictures we have, they're fake. Fake and phony. And I just wish they would just disappear along with you. Yoto's smile returns twice as terrifying and twice as large. Así es. Así será. The sound of thunder crashes around them. The sky flashes white, then turquoise, and then they are thrust into darkness. When the light returns, Lupa has vanished. Lupa? Where is she? Yoto tosses the repaired coyote necklace to Danny. Lo pediste, así es. Here? In the necklace? Smart boy. But I never said I wanted her to. You didn't need to. It's what your heart said to me. And it said you wanted her out of your life and to disappear. Verdad? Yes, but. Then the past is the past. The future is now. And in your future, I see a family who cares for you, who knows what it's like to be different, and who actually wants to help you llegar al otro lado. Not wrapping some silly webbing of lies and deceit. Yo puedo ser esa familia para ti, Danny. But only if you let me. You'll help me? And grant you exactly what your heart desires. Okay, lead the way. Danny tosses the coyote necklace aside. Excelente. <laughs> Come now, Danny. There's much ground to cover on this journey. Lucky for us, we won't need our feet ni nuestras cabezas. <laughs> Yoto's laughter echoes as she seizes the light. Yoto and Danny disappear. When the light returns, Eremita sneaks onto the scene. She picks up the necklace apprehensively. She knows what has happened here. She's returned. The trickster goddess of death. Eremita rushes off in pursuit of the boy and the coyote of legend. Night in Hermosillo. Yoto and Danny appear in a jungle as if teleported in a flash of light. Danny is nauseous from the journey. Oh. Not a strong stomach on this one. <laughs> Welcome, niño, a mi parte del mundo. Yoto helps Danny to his feet and waves her hands. The jungle awakens. 
twinkles of light paint a jungle like fireflies. The bushes glow with pulsing neon colors. The air lingers with the smell of old world. It is home. Here, we are undisturbed by the outside world. Here your ideas spring forth to life and your ancestors stands hand in hand in the shape of your beasts of the earth. Here we are equal. Here we can run free. Here we are alive. Yoto's voice reverberates through the space and the music of the coyote's howl embraces the jungle. Wow. Exceptional. No. Yeah. Bien. Porque it's all yours. What? Danny, you do not belong in a city as rock and stone. You belong here where your feet and the soil run together, where your heart has no burden and you are free to come and go as you please. Wherever I want? Al fin del mundo! <laughs> what else can we do? Hmm. ¿Cuál es tu estación favorita? Otoño. With a gesture, Yoto's magic changes the surrounding lighting from blues and greens to oranges and reds. Now change it back. <laughs> Otra vez. Yoto changes the seasons a few more times for Danny, striking a different dancing pose each time, landing back on fall. Wow. But hey, what about the leaves? Yoto smirks and rolls her eyes, snapping her fingers at Danny's pants pockets. He pulls out his hand to discover fall leaves of every color. Ah, see? I'm pretty hot stuff right here. Danny mischievously throws a handful of leaves at Yoto's head. Snickering, she gives a look that could kill and then smiles grabbing a handful of leaves. Oh. Oh. Now you've done it. Benaki! They play an improvised game using the leaves to tag each other. Eventually, Yoto gets the upper hand and scoops Danny up and proceeds to tickle him to submission. <laughs> <It's me all. laughs> <laughs> no mas, <laughs> no mas. <laughs> Danny becomes homesick and stops laughing. ¿Qué pasó, niño? Did I do something wrong? Eh? Oh, no, no. It's just that. Oh, no te gustan los juegos, sí? Eh? That's okay. I, I think I feel a song coming on anyways. ¿Qué? Oh, come on. You know the words. Es parecido a da 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 Estados Unidos. Da 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 Estados Unidos. No, I can't. I should go. Tio is waiting for me. And my family. Familia? The only kind folks you have spoken of have been liars and deceivers. Todo eso no suena como una familia. And in a family, you need trust, strength, and most of all, la perspectiva. He was not like that. He loves me. He would always send us letters when he made the trip. He never forgot our birthdays. He is the one who will take care of me when I make the trip al otro lado. Danny, no es más que un hombre. There is strength in numbers. And with our family, we are dominant in our reign, firm but just. And who knows when he will betray you? Like your sister, or your mother, or your father? Theo wouldn't do that. Hmm. Would he? <laughs> it's difficult. But if, if, if I were you, 
I wouldn't place my pesos on it. Take a moment. Look around you. Utiliza tu perspectiva. Aquí hay todo un mundo de posibilidades. Breathe. Listen to your heart. What do you wish for most in this world? Danny closes his eyes and takes a moment to think of his answer. A true family. <laughs> Just like that, Yoto is gone. Danny begins to wander around and explore the jungle. Is this all a dream? Feels kind of like a nightmare. I hope Lupa is okay. Suddenly, Eremita appears and tackles Danny to the ground. Estás loco? Eremita, what are you? Do you have a death wish? Huh? I told you to be careful with the necklace. Do you have any idea what Yoto is capable of? Providing me a family? Telling me the truth about me? Ayudándome con mi viaje al otro lado? Estúpido. She's not going to help you to the other side. She's going to send you to the other side. Send me? She's the trickster goddess of death. Death? La muerte? Ahora entiendes? Que mierda. She wouldn't do that. And if she was going to, why would she tell me about where I came from? To trick you. If she gains your trust, she will trick you into becoming part of her family. She will eat you so you can join her on the other side and become uno de sus amigotes forever. ¿Me comería? ¿Es un coyote? Coyotes eat children. ¿Por qué me lo dices ahora? Why come back and warn me? Porque... Because I felt responsible. Y tengo una cosa estúpida que se llama a conscience. So, la bruja has a heart after all. Deberías de escucharme. Yoto is not all she appears to be. Unlike death himself who takes those in their last hour, Yoto likes to make a mess of the whole cycle, tricking those she meets into an early departure. She probably is going right now to bring her familia so they can perform the ritual and send you al otro lado. Her powers are very real, so you have to be careful. I should know. I, I barely escaped it myself when we were joven. You? Wait. You were the child? See, si. and I tricked Yoto into the necklace. La única razón por la cual robé el necklace was because I was stealing it back. The man who took it from me was trying to peddle it in a flea market. It needed to come back to whomever would need it so that they would not make the same mistake I almost did. Tú tienes un don especial, niño. La perspectiva. It will help you in your coming trial. Just remember, the answer lies closer than you think. But why should I go? They did nothing but lie and... We do cosas raras para per las personas que queremos. Sometimes we just go about it the wrong way. No family is perfect, but we make it stronger con esta. Tu corazón. Danny hangs his head. Eremita hangs the necklace around his neck. He stares at it. And before he can raise his hand to thank her, she is gone. Bruja tonta. Thunder is heard again, along with the calls of coyotes. In a flash of light, Yoto appears with La Familia, a pack dressed in similar hooded fur, wolf pelts, and masks. They crouch and sprawl around Danny, almost like dogs, friendly, energetic, and playful. Ooh, qué brillante es tu pelo y qué corto. Silly pup, that's not fur, that's called hair. Whatever, it all tastes the same to me. <laughs> <laughs> Hoy tengo una broma. ¿Por qué necesitan hablar los humanos? 
¿Por qué? So they don't have to think. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What is it where one human calls another human an animal? ¿Qué? Flattery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So a human finds a giant peach filled with talking insects. And the spider says to the human, Enough! La familia cowers in the presence of Yoto. Ay, familia. Todo está bien. Tu madre está aquí. Danny, this is my family. And now, yours. <laughs> Ay. Ahora, if you would allow us the honor of welcoming you into our family con una comida. Without warning, la familia turns vicious and seizes Danny, lifting him over their shoulders. A meal? Si, mi familia tiene un hambre that only you can provide for. Para viajar al otro lado, you need to cast off your mortal coils. Leave all your value behind. Then you will join us among our familia. It is our oldest and most sacred tradition. The young shall lead the feast. Consume la carne. Deja el resto. Consume the flesh. Leave the rest. Consume la carne. Deja el resto. Consume the flesh. Leave the rest. La familia sets Danny down and begin to circle around him, stomping rhythmically, making the circle tighter and tighter. The sound of a drum echoes his heartbeat as the chant continues. Faster and faster as the circle becomes so tight it's almost claustrophobic. This is a nightmare. Parente! I... I, I still haven't used my last wish. Si, sí. tienes razón. What is your final wish, niño? A game. Un juego. La familia frantically begins running around like school children. Some run into each other and knock each other over, laughing too hard for their lungs to handle. Yoto's mask bleeds with ethereal rage, and she summons the sound of an earthquake. La familia snaps to attention and lines up single file besides Yoto. Oh, what are the stakes of your game? <laughs> One game for all the marbles. No necesitamos las canicas. Shut up. <sighs> One riddle. Your choice. I win. You switch places with my sister and never come out of the necklace again. Oh, the expander. And what do I get if I win? Me. Oh. Uh -huh. I will join your familia and serve you for as long as mi alma existe en este mundo. Así es. Así será. An ultraviolet light surrounds them all. The members of La Familia position themselves bordering Yoto like statues. As she speaks her riddle, a set of two drum strikes follows each line, and each member of La Familia strikes a new, dynamic, powerful pose. If you see it, I feel joy. If I hide it, I feel coy. If it's white, you see white. If it's thin, you'll see red all night. To make one takes a little delight. To break one is a terrible sight. Que soy! <laughs> Danny searches in his heart for the answer, but his mind is blank. La Familia makes the sound of ticking hands on the clock to distract Danny as he tries to think. Tick, tock, 
Tick, tack. Tick, tack. El tiempo es not on your side. Think quick. La familia tiene hambre. And they are not very patient. Lupa, please, ayúdame. Lupa's voice cuts through, faint, like radio static. Sonríe, Danny. You have to smile. What? Danny turns and sees everyone smiling at him. It is not comforting. It is alarming. He looks from face to face and then finally at Yoto. Danny peers down at the necklace, at the smile of the coyote. He finds the answer. He smiles. La sonrisa del coyote. What? La sonrisa del coyote. La familia lashes out against Danny and strides forward to attack him. Before they can get more than two steps, the light changes to the same turquoise as the necklace. The sound of wind whips around like a cyclone, as if seen in photographic stills. Step by step, Yoto and la familia attack and seize Danny, and there is a darkness. One final coyote howl is heard and then fades. The air is sucked from the space and Danny drops to the ground. The necklace rolls away and begins to glow as though it had a pulse. The sky begins to glow, pulsing with light in time with the necklace. Until we can see Danny and Lupa together again. Oh, my head. Danny? Danny! Danny, wake up! No, 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 no. Dios mío. Por favor. Por favor, you have to get up. We are so close. Please, Danny, please. Danny does not move. It's hard to tell if he's breathing. Lupa cradles Danny in her lap and strokes his hair, trying to compose herself. ¿Te acuerdas de cuando éramos niños? When you found that note in class that was saying you were a monster? Well, yo escribí esa nota. I wrote it because I was jealous. You were so bright and everything came so naturally to you. The way you could just pick up a pencil and one second be making some random shape and the, the next minute it was a drawing. Better than how it actually looked in real life. Era bello. Mamá tenía razón. Your gift is special. I said you needed me, but I was wrong. I need you. Now more than ever. So come back. Please. Nothing happens. Danny is still. The gift is gone. No. <laughs> no, don't leave me here. Lupa weeps solemnly over her brother's body. Tears fall on his hair. The wind returns, but it is musical. Wind chimes can be heard. The earth breathes. And so does Danny. Uh. You're leaking on my face. Miko? Ya te dije, that's not my name. <laughs> I didn't lose you. <laughs> nah, I'm not going anywhere. You'll have to try harder than that. <laughs> <laughs> ¿Qué te pasó? I remember Yoto trapping me in the necklace and, and then just seeing black. And then I could feel that you needed my help. Yeah. Turns out we need each other just as Mama said. Look, Nani, lo siento por todo. I mean, if we just had told you... It's okay. It really is. What made you change your mind? You were pretty angry, and I can't blame you. You? Me? When I was about to be eaten by Yoto's family... You were going to be eaten? Whoa! Que loco! I mean... <clears throat> lo siento. 
Continue. Bueno, I needed to solve a riddle to save both of us. And Eremita, the one who sold me the necklace, but also helped me realize what Yoto was really up to. Well, she said the answer would be right here in my heart. And I heard your voice and I knew exactly what to do. I'm glad. No me importa lo que tú y mamá me dijeron. What matters is that you're my family and I wouldn't trade you for anything or anyone else. We wouldn't trade you either. Lupa and Danny embrace. They have survived and are lucky to be alive. Bueno, not to be a bearer of bad news, but we still don't have any money to get to Tio's boat. Yeah, me acuerdo. I only wish I hadn't wasted it on this stupid... Huh? Danny sticks his hands in his pocket and pulls out the wad of money he had been tricked out of by Eremita. It has a note attached to it. Una nota? What does it say? Dear Danny, tú necesitas el dinero más que yo. Next time, don't be so gullible. Sencillamente, la bruja. Guess they are good witches after all. Epilogue, Los Angeles, 2001. It is four years later and Danny is now 20 years old. He sits at an easel in the back room of his uncle's restaurant. It's somewhat plush, a slightly torn, comfortable couch, a couple chairs, a small black and white TV and radio. He is lost in the canvas, but makes no movement towards the brush. He instead proceeds to stare it down like it has offended him. There's a loud crash of pots and pans off stage that jolts Danny from his concentration. Que chingados! Deal? Hey, Danny, there's a package here for you. Can you bring it here? Dio enters. He's a large set man in a bright Hawaiian shirt and a fedora. One of the uncles who you are proud of to have, but you roll your eyes at a lot. Dio, limping slightly, carries a small cardboard box, which he sets down next to the easel. Estás bien? Si, sí, si, sí, I'm all right. How's the painting going? Muy mal. It's missing something, but the brush feels heavy in my hand. The paint seems goopy. Everything just seems off. ¿Estás bien? Creo que la cliente le va a gustar tu pintura. Lo imagino. Worst comes to worst, it will be a good conversation starter at her next wine and cheese party. Oh, see, sí, Meredith! It is quite splendid, isn't it? I do love to splash up the house with a bit of culture from time to time. And so cheap. That adorable little brown boy from the restaurant does them for only $15 a painting. And quite the looker he is, too. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, how good it is to be able to give back to your community, wouldn't you say, Janice? Oh, quite. Danny and Theo hold their noses up very high with their thumbs and emit a very posh laugh and then burst into actual laughter. <laughs> so, where's Lupa? Oh, I sent her and su marido out for a bit. I can only handle so much of their baby talk for one day. <laughs> that can be so gross. Danny finally takes notice of the package Theo has brought with him. The box? Es para mí, no? Ha, <laughs> sí. Aunque es raro, no tiene una dirección, solo tu nombre. And it just appeared out of nowhere. Appeared? Sí. Un momento, I'm signing off the delivery for the food truck. The next minute, I'm falling over this thing into una caja de pinche fresas. Couldn't wait to eat them, huh? Cállate la boca. How about you, Mr. Man? Who's this from? Another one of your admirers? Knock it off. Don't play coy. I remember the last one. Hmm. ¿Cuál era su nombre? Amanda. Ah, sí, Amanda. 
Was she the one who sent you her hair with the poem? O la otra chica con los ojos locos y las grandes uy. Would you quit? You cabrón cachondo. Danny reaches for the box from his spot at the easel, but Tio swipes the box away from Danny. Oh, ahora lo veo claro. Dear Danny, mi amor, my life is incomplete without you. Every day I look upon your painting. I imagine your steady, strong hand making every brushstroke so smoothly, so perfectly. I can almost feel those nibble fingers on my... Danny tackles Theo for the box. Their roughhousing is a series of keepaways and too slow. Eventually, Danny gets the upper hand. The box falls out of Theo's hands and opens, revealing the turquoise coyote necklace. Danny's body runs cold and freezes up. He moves towards the necklace, cautiously inspecting it. Danny! Danny! Danny picks up the statuette like it's a foreign object. Suddenly, all of the memories come rushing back to him. This is it! Danny hurries over to his canvas with a newfound inspiration. He proceeds to swipe and slide the brush in a frenzy as as if he's engaged in a sword fight, paint flying from the canvas at times. ¿Qué, qué? ¿Cómo? ¿Qué es? And just like that, Danny is finished. Exhausted, he allows the paint palette to fall out of his hand on the table. Danny repositions the easel to face Theo. They stand together, side by side, and admire Danny's new work with pride. This is it! (laughs) (laughs) End of play. Thank you so much for tuning in to this audio play reading of Sonrisa del Coyote by David Alonso Rodriguez. The reading features Alma de Leon as narrator, Hernán Angulo as Danny, Cristina María as Sofía and Yoto, Diana González Moret as Lupa and Eremita, Jean Arroyo as Familia Uno and Tío, and Manuel Fernández as Familia Dos. You can find Sandcastle Theatre Company on social media at facebook.com slash Sandcastle Theatre Co. and Sandcastle Theatre Co. on Instagram. This audio play production is in honor of the life of David Alonso Rodriguez and in celebration of his memory. Contributions may be made in his honor to the David Alonso Rodriguez Memorial Fund using the link in the description below. David's love and creative spirit touched all who knew him. We hope his light will live on in this beautiful piece of theater that he wrote from the heart. Mm